guys? We are back with another Q&A here on my channel. I've been trying to do these every single month and here we're doing another one. This is from Purely Snapchat. So if you don't follow me on there, I'll put my uh, little emblem down there to go ahead and go and follow me. If you specifically have a question that you would like for the Q&A, I will shoot out a uh, you know, Q&A little screen. And this is from basically from that, all these questions. So I appreciate everybody that's following along. And uh, if you guys haven't, go down there, hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. So let's get right into it. Hopefully you guys have maybe a drink, something to kick back because it's going to be a little bit of a long video. I have quite a few questions and I'm trying to get an answer as many of them as I can. First question is from Austin Muner. Uh, thoughts on creatine, creatine loading, and one scoop after that. I'll just tell you my uh, you know, personal experiences from taking creatine directly. You know, I don't actually take a ton of creatine nowadays compared to when I was a younger kid, primarily because I, you know, eat quite a bit of red meat and I take a few supplements that do have a little bit of creatine in it. So I'm not technically loading creatine. But with that being said, you know, I do think creatine um, has a place, especially if you're a younger guy, a natural guy, and really trying to take every um, edge that you can. Um, obviously, you know, recovery is a huge key. Um, being natural, you're a little bit hindered uh, on that compared to, um, you know, whether you're taking, you know, a bunch of normal supplements or whatever you might be taking to, um, you know, uh, improve your recovery, so to speak. You know, overall, I think creatine is really good. Um, I think that you can really benefit from taking it. I was like doing like maybe 10 grams uh, pre-workout, 10 grams uh, post-workout, um, something simple like that. Kind of what I've had some of my clients do, you know, and it's been successful. So hopefully that helps. Go on to the next question. Ricky MTZ 007 said, what's your current routine? Right now I'm kind of all over the place. Uh, it was just my son's birthday this last weekend. So usually I have a pretty set in stone, you know, routine, but with obviously everything going on with, uh, you know, the world right now, you know, I'm just uh, happy to get to the gym when I do get to the gym. And, and to be honest, I've been kind of playing with a few different splits, trying a little bit more increased volume some days and a little bit decreased volume other days as far as you know, uh, like a few days ago, I just did uh, chest and shoulders and felt really good, but it, then it was like, I can't really focus on the muscles as much as I really want to. So I really like, you know, the single days, kind of like an old school split where I was doing, you know, basically legs, chest, um, back, maybe a day off, and then going back legs, uh, shoulders, and then arms, you know, very basic, um, you know, hitting legs twice, kind of focusing on that and kind of having everything else just kind of fill in. Um, but you know, I'm one that I don't really have to focus on a ton of areas of my upper body. Obviously I could be training chest a little bit more, but you know, with this tear, I'm not, uh, you know, I haven't really been attacking my chest yet. I've just been training once a week, trying to get it back in, uh, in, in the routine of things. But for my, for my split right now, it's, it's basically all over the place. So hopefully, hopefully that somewhat answers that question. All right. So the next one's from brand flake zero one. And he asked how important is insulin resistance and bodybuilding? Is it something that you worry about in the off season? Do you track your blood sugars levels? In the off season, I don't really worry about it a ton. I just try to eat, you know, basically as much as I can, but I still have a few meals, usually one-ish a day that I don't have carbs in um, towards the end of the day. So, I mean, it's something that I do worry about, but it's not something that is super in my mind. Um, you know, I use a supplement like Glycolog. I got some sitting right here. Um, for basically two, maybe three meals a day, um, you know, anything higher than... For myself, like 100 grams of carbs, I'll, I'll take some glycolog just because I know how I'm gonna feel, you know, get sluggish and tired. But you know, if you're really eating clean and you're eating what you need to, and, and I'm saying that like not overeating, not overindulging, uh, you don't have to really worry about it. I don't think as much. Uh, in the pre-contest part of things, I have actually tracked my blood sugar very, very closely back in high school and in, uh, in college, uh, just because I almost passed out a few times doing stairs. I'm sure a few of you guys out there can relate. And, uh, you know, of course we got protective mothers. So I had a, you know, a sugar a glucose monitor with me and, you know, it was just the way, and I had a little glucose tabs and all that kind of stuff. You can be as precautious as you want. Um, you know, now that I feel a little bit more confident, uh, with what I'm doing and I, you know, I just really haven't had to dive into prep that much. I mean, obviously back then I was, you know, natural and, uh, very small. So I just, you know, diet so hard. I remember, you know, dieting on fish for 16 weeks back then and things like that. Um, but you know, hopefully that answers your question a little bit. I still, I do worry about it. You know, things like glycolog do help. And, you know, I do drink a lot of water, stay hydrated, 
between meals and really try to, uh, you know, make sure I'm not overindulging, um, you know, in sugars and things like that. All right, the next question is from Mr. Spratt 101. Um, he asked, do you train every day to get to or keep your size? Um, for me personally, the biggest I've ever been, the best um, I've ever felt as far as, wow, I'm like growing like left and right, is like the least I was ever training. Um, you know, I really think recovery is done outside the gym. So, you know, don't really think you gotta be training every single day. I actually think that it hinders growth uh, to a certain factor. I mean, obviously it's super, uh, clutch for getting lean and training every day during a prep because you can eat a lot of food and still lean down. Um, but overall, I think, uh, you know, you need recovery, especially if you're trying to put on uh, lean tissue um, while you're eating. And if you're trying to, you know, cut body fat at the same time, that much more you need uh, as far as recovery and sleep. But yeah, I think for myself, like five days is kind of like that sweet medium. I know I've actually been pushed down to four days before from Chris. Hate it. And five days is kind of where I sit. So that's kind of my happy medium for off season. And I'll step it up to six days. I don't really train seven days anymore. I used to with Mountain Dog, but you know, six days is kind of like my happy medium. I still, you know, I've got my family. I still want a day of normalcy and to let my body honestly just recoup. I just feel like my workouts get so crappy after a while if I don't take a day off. The next question is from Shauner2942. What's your heaviest deadlift? That is a good question. Um, so I was a power lifter my freshman year in high school and I deadlifted 535 or I want to say it's 535 or 555, 535. I should remember that, but 535 in um, high school as a freshman playing football. Of course, they wanted me in uh, powerlifting. So off season, I went to powerlifting and I deadlifted 535 and that was in the 181 class. Um, nowadays... I used to pull six plates every now and then um, just because I was ballsy um, a couple of years ago. And, you know, now uh, I really I really haven't gone over five plates probably in the last, you know, ever since this this guy's happened. I started kind of going heavier in the last few weeks, the last few months, if you guys have been watching. You know, I'm not back to that, you know, point where I'm like pulling around six plates, but I think I did a good, you know, I don't, I don't want to say it was a good set of eight, but it must have been at least... It must have been at least three to five reps. I don't think I would have done anything less than that with uh, six plates, so whatever that is, 585. Um, so maybe my deadlift's around 600, but to be honest, I probably can't even pull that because back in my head, I'm always thinking about stuff. So, you know, I've done 500 um, for close to 20 reps, and that's kind of like my goal on squat and deadlift is to get back to, um, you know, being able to do a lot, a lot of volume with a decent amount of weight. Um, not necessarily a crazy amount of weight for one rep because with what I'm doing, it just doesn't benefit me. So hopefully that answers the question. Hayden Swan 13, he said, what's your favorite meal? Um, as far as my favorite meals from Mayfair right now, 100% is gotta be the Flex Lewis Signature. Uh, salmon meal is like a miso salmon with rice and uh, beans, bomb, really, really good. Um, as far as my favorite, you know, off the course meal, of course, it's probably sushi or burger if I'm being easy. Favorite food item, it's gotta be a muffin. Of course, you guys know I'm all about that muffin pump, but uh, you know, that's like a rundown of my three favorite foods or something like that, but hopefully that answers the question. Next question is from LeftyB06. If I'm trying to get big naturally, what supplements besides protein shakes will help me get there? So I actually have a couple supplements right here and it'd probably be easier just for me to show you. So if you are natural, you're just taking protein, First supplement that I really recommend guys to take is something like the glycolog, um, just because I do think if you are trying to grow and you're a young dude, you get to eat a lot of food. And this just allows you to eat, you know, that much more carbs without really feeling sluggish and uh, then being more utilized uh, for your muscle uh, growth. Myostax, another really great supplement, it is gonna help you with uh, increased protein synthesis. So, you know, whatever you're eating is just gonna be that much more beneficial to your muscle. Another one, you know, a little bit more serious one is the new SST1 um, stack from Blackstone Labs. The This is the IGF, this is the GH um, stack. That's pretty dang serious. And to be honest, if you guys go get your blood levels checked while you're taking that, you will definitely see, uh, well, if you, check, if you get your blood levels checked before, during and after, you'll definitely notice, uh, you know, it works. So I've been uh, really enjoying, especially the SST uh, 1GH. I take this before I go to bed, knocks me out. Uh, previously, I was always taking, um, trying to find it. 
growth uh, has been kind of steering towards the GH and replacing that. Um, so that being said, that's just a few supplements uh, as far as the more like pill kind of uh, region, then you can obviously you can go down to your BCAAs. I actually don't have any BCAA playing here, but that is the resurgence. This is the resurgence with caffeine. I would actually recommend just the plain BCAAs, which like I said, I don't actually have one here. Um, but that's the, that's another great product because it's going to help, you know, amino acids, BCAs are of course the building block to muscle. So, um, you know, I, I love taking that, uh, during cardio and, uh, you know, intra or post workout, depending on if you're doing a product, um, like the next one that I'm about to mention, sorry, I'm going on a tangent, but I can't leave out my favorite, uh, bulking supplement, uh, which would be formula 19, uh, 100% if you are a young guy out there trying to put on size, trying to put on weight. Um, that is a great way. I, I have taken up to 200 grams of carbs around training just from Formula 19. Um, usually I take around 100, maybe 150. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take 50 before, 50 during, 50 after, spread it out like that, or I'll do 100 during, 50 before, 50 after. Um, so yeah, it's a good way to get 100, 150 grams of extra carbs in if you're trying to grow. So hopefully that you know gives you a little rundown of some of the Blackstone Lab supplements. And of course, if you guys want to, uh, I'll put my discount code right below. Of course, there will be a link in the uh, description below for you guys to take over 20% um, off, of course, with my name, Cody Montgomery. I appreciate all the support. Um, obviously, when you guys use the code, helps the channel, helps me. So thank you guys. The next question, Kay Hernandez, what is bulking and cutting? How many times should you do it? How long and why is it important? So I'm going to look at this question because you guys got to get it's from Snapchat. Um, as a young kid that has no idea what the word bulking means and what the word cutting means. So basically people put in terms when they're bulking and cutting and I don't really even like to say that. I just always am doing the same thing basically in my eyes. I mean, obviously sometimes I'm having to really shed fat. Sometimes I'm focusing more on muscle, but basically bulking is you're in a calorie surplus. You're not really worrying so much about body fat. I mean, you still hypothetically you're still worried about body fat but you're more worried about muscle gain strength and those are your two primary concerns um cutting more so is during like a you know if you're getting ready for a show trying to lose weight for the summer whatever and you're in more of a calorie deficit doing a bunch of cardio and trying to burn as many calories as you can while you know keeping your size so that's kind of the term but bulking and cutting and there's not really right uh amount of times technically or amount of uh length as far as that goes, but it is still important, I think, to have quote unquote uh, bulking, cutting, not not like I said, like I don't like to call them like that, but um, cycles, you know, I like to train, call them training cycles, um, where you're, you know, more focused on one thing. So, you know, if you are eating a ton of food for, you know, 12 months on end, like nonstop, like an off season, it's not gonna be as beneficial as if you go maybe three months of an off season and take like four to six weeks as a recompo uh, recompose, phase kind of uh you know help uh you know lean down some body fat help your receptors help your uh it goes back to the blood sugar uh you know your insulin all that kind of stuff helps all of that and uh it's a good thing to do as far as uh you know if you're trying to keep your metabolism going and continue to make progress rather than just staying stagnant i think um so that's kind of why people put it in terms you know people are like oh don't worry bro i'm bulking you know because they're like eating as like shit, they shouldn't be doing that. Um, but <laughs> that's kind of hopefully uh, explains some of the terms and uh, why it's important or why people think it's important. So hopefully that helps. The next one is from Min Murph Inator. Was bodybuilding your first love or did you have another passion before discovering it? So um, just give you guys a rundown. When I was a kid, I played pretty much everything. Um, I at least tried a, a season or, you know, I went out and I, you know, tried out for it or whatever, as far as sports, um, you know, I did a lot. I played violin. I played, I did a whole lot growing up. My parents were really great. Um, you know, they really, um, uh, pushed activity and pushed school and all that good stuff. So, um, my first love, I would say, I mean, I played lots of stuff, did lots of stuff. I was a big time drummer. I really liked uh, drumming, uh, still remember you know, I got for many of my birthdays growing up, Christmases and stuff like that, getting drum sets or, you know, stuff for my drums. 
um, from my parents, from my grandparents. My uncle's actually a drummer. My brother and my whole family is pretty much musicians, uh, except for me. I'm just a dead over here that's tried to play drums every now and then or beat on something. But um, my first love, I'd, I'd probably say, was golf. Um, before bodybuilding, um, you know, I golfed for years. I went every single day. I used to play in the uh, NT PGA, which is uh, North Texas, or no, what is it? I was like in the junior or whatever, I don't know, NTPGA juniors or I don't know what it was, but uh, Vince Whaley, shout out. I know you're probably uh, not watching this, but uh, he is now on the PGA Tour and, you know, we were, um, you know, buddies for, you know, a little bit of our competitive career. We used to carpool and stuff like that, so it's pretty cool. Uh, it's been very inspiring to see his uh, career take off here in the last uh, couple of years. And I've actually gotten out to the golf course a couple of times just because, I'm like, man, I, I miss it. And, and seeing him, you know, post on uh, Instagram and stuff, you know, traveling to all these cool places and playing these amazing courses, like, man, the guy, the guy made his dream come true. And it's really cool to, uh, to watch, man. And, and uh, shout out Vince Whaley. So that was probably my first love. So hopefully that answered that question. The Loyal Lewis, what's your cardio regimen for you and why does it work for you? Also watch your stories and videos, major help from getting my legs and shoulders more defined and bigger. Thanks for watching, bro. I appreciate the support. Um, uh, right now I'm doing like 20 minutes of hard, medium, I say hard, medium probably cardio on stairs. Uh, it is in my garage, so it's super humid. I do sweat a lot, um, but just 20 minutes. I'm just trying to get my metabolism going, trying to get my appetite going. And uh, I'll increase that as, as things uh, kind of straighten out and as I, you know, dial in decide what show I'm gonna do and all that kind of stuff. Right now I'm still in a phase where I'm trying to put on size, but I am leaning down a little bit um, just from doing the cardio for sure. And to go back to that question, sorry. Um, I'm doing like, I'm trying to do five days a week with the cardio. So not every day and not, you know, three days a week I'm still. Next question is from Hacks. He said, if you see muscle imbalances or like one pack is bigger than the other, how do you go about changing them? Um, he asked two questions, so that's the first one. Um, 100%. I always was super, super, you know, oh my gosh, this calf's bigger than this or my left arm's bigger than the right. You know, I need to start, you know, at night remembering that before I get the, oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all jokes aside, um, you know, for me, I really think, uh, well, for anyone doing single uh, unilateral uh, movements, you know, whether it's for chest, you know, doing dumbbells over barbell, um, you know, not always, but just kind of specifically focusing on a few exercises like, okay, I'm really going to try to feel my left pec. Um, you know, for me, my right side always fired more. So I always had to think about my left a little bit more. And to be honest with the unilaterals, sometimes I would even do maybe an extra rep or two on the, uh, the left side or the less dominant side, um, just because I was in my head all the time. Um, so I could definitely relate to, uh, to that question. And I'm sure a lot of you guys out there can. So that's how I kind of approach it. You know, is there a right and, way, uh, a right and a wrong way to do stuff? Um, just kind of figure out what works, works for you and uh, what makes you the most mentally sane because at the end of the day, this is a mental game. Uh, and his second question is, uh, is there any way possible to stay lean while putting on muscle? 110%. Uh, watch the channel, man. I don't really get fat. I'm not, I will, I'm gonna try not to get fat. <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, don't be lazy. Don't, uh, you know, you don't have to do cardio all year, but definitely have a regimen. If you're gonna take off here a few weeks, you know, make sure you get back on it. Um, I don't think that there's necessarily a bad thing um, about, you know, a bulking cycle, but you wanna be eating clean foods. Don't make that excuse to go, you know, eat a burger every, you know, a few nights. Have a, have a plan to execute it. You know, like I try to eat uh, pretty clean and I'd have like two meals, so two, two evenings a week where I, you know, uh, chill right now. And uh, I'm eating pretty much, you know, family dinners and stuff like that. So it's not like I'm uh, depriving myself, but I am eating within my realm and, uh, you know, what I think I should be eating when I do, do, when I do, do, when I eat dinners and stuff like that with my family. The Coach Freds, do you lift with a partner or do you lift alone? Obviously you have someone recording your lifts, but I wasn't sure if uh, they lifted with you or as well. Uh, do you find it easier to push yourself when lifting alone or with a partner? So this is gonna be kind of funny, but I might as well show you guys. This isn't technically what I use at the gym to film, but imagine this, this is actually, at the gym, I use a foam roller, like 90% of the time. Take it like this. I take it like this with uh, my shaker. So imagine this is my shaker. This is a foam roller that's like this tall. 
I put my shaker like this, and then I put my phone like this, and then I press record, and then I upload it. 90% of the time I'm training by myself. Uh, recently I have had um, my friend Tyler, shout out Tyler, probably watching this, um, from the gym, kind of helped me with some videos. Uh, so if you have seen somebody, that's him, and we actually train together um, sometimes, but uh, most of the time I like to train alone, man. I like to just get in the zone, be quiet, and just uh, kind of unplug, you know, especially now, uh, you know, that have a family and stuff like that. It's kind of like, you know, the gym is still work to me, but it's still kind of like my outlet, my peace and quiet and my, uh, my happy place, you know? And, and if you ever see me in the gym and you're like, man, that guy's a dick. Cause probably a few people have, it's just because man, I'm in my zone. That's like my one hour to myself on a 24 and, um, and not to myself, but it's one hour on a 24 that I need to really kill and, and do that for not just myself, but for my family and, and, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of other things than just, uh, just me getting a good workout. And, you know, this is how I, um, you know, you know, I rely on this. So that hour to me is more than just a normal workout. So, you know, that's kind of, I get in my zone and really, and, and truly most people don't get that. And the ones that do, do get it. And the ones that don't, you know, they, they fade out for sure. McCammer 21 calves five. When did you know you wanted to get your pro card and how did you get sponsored by Blackstone? So I started bodybuilding and I wanted to be a pro pretty much like when I picked up my first magazine. Um, I just kind of wanted to compete first and then I was like, oh, there's like this pro thing. Of course you want to, you know, as, as a kid, you always look up to these pro football players, these pro whatever. So of course I wanted to be a pro. I was probably like 15. Um, well, actually, I was definitely 15. I was, I was prepping for my first show. Um, and I was watching like thousand Flex Lewis videos. So I'm sure at that point I was salivating over, um, you know, being an IP pro. And I remember sitting on my, uh, I know this is really weird, but I remember sitting on my toilet in, in my uh, parents' house and, <laughs> and you're just, you know, just chilling. And I remember sitting there and, and I don't know if I had just come home from school or if I had just come home from the gym, but I was for sure like, man, I was a freshman or maybe if he's still in eighth grade. And I just said like, I want to be a bodybuilder. I want to lift weights and that's what I want to do. And like, I want to, I want to, I remember it sounds silly, but I felt like God talked to me and I got chills and it was just, you know, like kind of like the same moment when I stepped on stage, um, for the first time, it was just, you know, I'd done so many other things, so many other activities, so many other sports. And it was just like, I finally felt like at peace and at home with it. And like, it was all up to me and it wasn't up to anybody else. So, um, yeah, it was, I don't even remember what the question was. Um, but that was when I was dreaming about being a pro. Uh, way back, man, way back, for sure, uh, when everybody else thought I was crazy, for sure. Um, but uh, how did you get sponsored by Blackstone? Um, so I was with uh, another company, and I, I know that I could actually say the name. Uh, I was with Evagen Nutrition, um, my first sponsor when I was 18. And, um, you know, we parted ways because things got, uh, I guess, you know, I, w I was looking to more so have a career with it. And... Uh, you know, I knew that I was about to be out of high school and I really needed, um, you know, support and I needed um, more support than what I had. And, you know, at the time I was with uh, Muscular Development Magazine, I was with uh, them. And basically, you know, I went from that to almost nothing. Uh, well, yeah, I had no sponsors, just kind of my parents for a little while. And, uh, you know, I said that by December 31st, 2014, um, if I did not, yeah, 2014, if I did not have a sponsor, um, that I was just going to focus on school the, the next semester, because, you know, obviously semester starts around, you know, January or whatever. So still remember, you know, I, I, uh, messaged Blackstone back then and, and we started to go back and forth. And, and actually at the time it was a different company. It was called prime nutrition, um, originally that I had reached out to. And, uh, you know, they said, we got this company, you know, Blackstone labs, and, um, you know, what do you think? And I was like, well, let me try some of the products. You know, I want to, want to try it. I, I looked at all their stuff and I was like, you guys are crazy. This is, you know, some, some awesome marketing. And they were, you know, kind of pushing the envelope and all that kind of stuff with, uh, prime being more the, uh, the clean, uh, you know, uh, everyday mom and pop kind of shop, whatever, um, with Blackstone being more the edge, the bodybuilding brand. So I was like, you know, I started to get very intrigued, tried the products. I was like, fell in love. It was angel dust back then. 
And uh, you know, never really looked back. We just kind of, we agreed on terms uh, around, it was like December something, 2014. And you know, here we are, you know, over almost, yeah, a long time later. <laughs> so sorry to get all emotional, but you guys are uh, digging up some pretty deep questions here with uh, with those. Hopefully that answers your question. I got sponsored back all the way in 2014, uh, December 2014. Started with Chris Aceto right after that and uh, turned pro shortly after that. It was July 2015 that uh, Mr. USA was. So, a little rundown. XX Eric Malls, uh, don't wanna butcher the name. What's your workout split for each day because you are always doing legs, I love it. Like I'd said previously in the video, uh, I do legs like two times a week, Ben. So don't skimp. Uh, I actually have a few of my uh, girls doing three leg days a week on, uh, on uh, from you know online coaching clients. But me myself, I'm just doing two leg days right now. Hopefully that answers that. <laughs> Josh, man, uh, how long does it take to, uh, for your arms to get thicker? Let's say to add an extra half an inch. To be honest, man, if you work out right and you go, you know, take some of this Formula 19 and uh, some glycolog and probably a couple muffins before you work out, you could probably add, an, add half an inch to your arm just just by working out. But obviously, it's not going to stay. Um, but honestly, you gotta you gotta at least you gotta be a little bit patient. But I would say you could do it, um, you know, within a month. Uh, I would say maybe even you know more than that. But it depends, obviously, on the person. I mean, I remember going to the gym and feeling like I was adding an inch to my arm every time I was working out when I was like a puny little thing, you know, a buck, buck, whatever I was. But, um, you know, if you're, you know, further in your, your career or in your uh, progress, um, it could be a little bit harder or if you have a stubborn body part, but, uh, slow down, squeeze that muscle. And, uh, you know, you could train it like two times a week. I really would not suggest arms, uh, more than two times a week though. Next question is from KJ Barra. He said, uh, hey Cody, I'd like to hear your point of view on growth hormone products like SST1GH if they're effective and if they're harm to using them. So this is a product that I actually mentioned earlier. This is part of the stack. And this is the IGF one, this is the GH. Um, as far as do I like them, I, I, I was raving about this earlier, I definitely like it. Um, helps me with sleep, puts me in a deeper sleep. I actually wear a watch a lot of times when I sleep and I've noticed that I get a lot more um, REM sleep. And if you guys actually, you know, put a watch on that can track all that kind of stuff and you realize and you're like, holy moly, I'm sleeping like crap. That's why I'm feeling the way I do. Sleep has a lot of uh, importance and, you know, obviously growth hormone um, has a big uh, play in how you sleep. Um, you know, people that get on growth hormone um, from the doctor or whatever, uh, be have you, um, your sleep improves drastically. You're, you're tired all the time because you're in a growing state because all of a sudden your body has access, uh, to more, um, growth hormone, uh, in, throughout your body. So, you know, spiking it is definitely going to help. Uh, you know, as far as there, is there harm to taking it? Um, I would say with something like this, you're not, you're not, you should not be scared. Um, you know, at least that's my, uh, personal opinion. I'm not really looking at any of these um, as something that is going to be toxic to my body. Um, you know, even the things like Chosen One and Brutal Force, you know, uh, compared the, that to some of the stuff five, ten years ago uh, on the market it is uh, night and day. You know, it's not liver toxic. It's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's just a different, um, different animal, you know. So I think, you know, for me, I personally really like the uh, SST1 uh, GH, and for years I was also taking the growth um, product. I mean, really and truly, I, I think you can't go wrong uh, spiking your uh, you know growth hormone throughout the night. Next question is from Elikast. Uh, butchered the heck out of that, but hey, mate, what's the size to gain? Uh, sec what's the secret to gaining healthy size? Uh, trying to go slow, not trying to put on too much mass at one time not eating a bunch of junk and uh, training hard and staying hydrated. I think staying hydrated people overview, but I know that was a lot in one little short uh, second, but um, yeah, I really think don't over, uh, don't overthink it and uh, don't, um, don't over, don't overthink it and just train hard, eat big and sleep a lot. And, 
that's kind of the, what I focus on at least. Those are like the three big big ones, and I know I'm probably leaving a couple out, but those are the three main ones that I that I focus on. Hopefully that helps. Next question, Eddie Goose One. What is your job? What is your main source of income? So uh, this is a good question. I don't know if I've actually been asked that on the Q and A, um, but I have been basically full time bodybuilding um, since. Uh, becoming Mr. USA, which was 2015, like I said, in July. Um, before that, I was uh, still heavily relying on bodybuilding, but I was in college. Uh, I was taking a uh, full, full-time class, uh, full-time classes, uh, 15 hours. And um, yeah, I mean, I was still competing then. I was a, I was a teenager and a uh, collegiate uh, bodybuilder at that time. And then basically when I uh, won the Mr. USA championships, uh, you know, I was already with Blackstone, but at that point, you know, the traveling started to come in, I guess, posed uh, close to 15 times probably that year or more. Uh, well, within like the 12 to 15 months following Mr. USA. Um, so I was gone almost every weekend, it seemed like at a local event or, you know, it, it was pretty much every other weekend. I think it, it came out to like 30 weeks that I was gone for the first uh, year after that. And, you know, at that point, I basically had to drop out of college and went pretty much full time with this. I got, you know, very lucky. I signed with Chic, um, which I'm still with. Uh, I signed with Jaguar. You know, I signed with a lot of sponsors right after Mr. USA's and, um, you know, I had my parents consent to basically take a year off of school, which, uh, you know, now looking back has been a couple of years, but, but uh, I'm still just sitting here relying on it and, uh, you know, focusing on it. I've been very, very uh, fortunate with, obviously Blackstone has been uh, my number one uh, sponsor through the years, um, all of you guys uh, supporting Team Montgomery, um, and you know now that I have a family, I'm even more so uh, motivated to continue not only competing but bringing you guys good material, um, trying to bring you guys um, you know maybe inside look um, that you, you maybe that you wanted to see. Like I know that I wanted to see um, you know growing up uh, from the guys that I was watching. So hopefully you guys enjoy these videos. Um, but yeah, I, I, I rely heavily on you guys' support. I rely heavily on Blackstone. I rely, rely heavily on my, my sponsors. Obviously, uh, stage money is, is not really um, gonna pay the bills, uh, sadly, with this sport. It's more so the sponsors, it's more so the, uh, the support that you have, and uh, obviously the, uh, the followers and the uh, supporters that um, support you and support me. I, I wanna say truly thank you guys. Uh, you know, I don't think I would be here um, you know, if it wasn't uh, for you guys, uh, for you guys' support. So I truly want to uh, extend my biggest uh, heartfelt thank you to all of you guys for allowing me to basically live my dream and, uh, you know, give me a platform to speak my crazy mind and give you guys a little insight on what it's like to uh, lift weights for a living. <laughs> the next question is from Grayson Scoot, Scott. When did you start build it, bodybuilding? And uh, if you could take only one supplement, what would it be? I started bodybuilding when I was like 15. I uh, did my first show like literally the day, a couple days after I turned 16, prepped for that show for six months when I was 15. Um, but yeah, I started really looking at bodybuilding magazines when I was probably 14. And and uh, yeah, that's when I really got into it. It was 14, 15. Um, and that was my first show. It was a 2010 uh, Dallas Europa as a teenager. I won the uh, teenage class. And if I could only want take one supplement, I would probably, it's a good question. I'd probably, I'd pr I mean, it's stupid, but I'd probably have to go with uh, some isolation um, just because I am a huge believer in um, having a large amount of protein and not necessarily having that all from whole foods. I think there's a huge benefit from having quick acting protein in your diet, whether that be first thing in the morning um, after cardio or you know, post-workout um, or even before bed. Um, so if I had to take one supplement, I would probably just say protein because I just do think that is the building block for muscle. And, you know, the pre-workouts are nice. The, I mean, obviously I love hype. I love, love hype. I don't know if I can train without it. Um, but if I was stuck on an island and I was like, man, I can only have one supplement to help my muscles, I'd have to go with isolation. T-K-O-R-B-O-S. Um, I live in Wesley Chapel and would love to uh, have a training session with you. Can we make that happen? So I told him that I was gonna answer this question on the video. I do actually offer some uh, in-person training. 
Uh, not a ton. So if you want to come work out with me, we can make something happen. DM me or message me on uh, the YouTube or whatever, if you have you. And we could set something up. Obviously, it will cost uh, some money because I don't have unlimited amount of uh, time every day to uh, train with you guys. Uh, but if you guys are interested in, in it, uh, I will be, you know, offering some out of uh, Bradenton, Florida. So if you guys are around in this area or maybe coming out to Tampa or Sarasota for, you know, visiting family or whatever, want to come get a workout with, in with me, you know, hit me up and maybe we can make that happen. So uh, T Corbos, uh, hit me up and we'll make it happen, brother. The next question is from Grayson Gallich. He said, when are we seeing you on stage again? And that is a very good question. Um, it's a it's an ongoing question, and I really wish I could answer it right now. Um, I was honestly really hoping that I was going to be doing Tampa here in a few weeks, but just with all the uncertainty, um, I hope you guys uh, can understand that I just really haven't been in it fully to to put my heart into it and put my um, you know the, the all the sacrifice and all the things that go into prepping. I mean, you only have one body and. You know, prep's not not necessarily healthy, and I just I didn't want to um, start prepping for a show and then it not happen. And I just don't know if I could take it mentally, on top of uh, you know even financially, um, just just all of the uh, the risk just didn't really seem like it was worth it. Obviously, when you get on stage, you wanna you wanna make money, and uh, you know there's not that much money to be made. Um, so you wanna be smart with your moves, and uh, on top of that, I just kind of wanted to feel out what happens at Tampa. Uh, I really hope it goes really well because then I'm gonna get my butt on stage, uh, you know, hopefully within the next few months. Um, just kind of hear things out, see how things play out. And uh, I'm definitely uh, wanting to get on stage by the end of this year. Arden Hagman, he said, what's your next Glock? And let me see. It's all clear. This is my 34, uh, Glock 34 that uh, DEFCON 3 did for me and this was actually my first custom Glock and many of you guys that follow me on Snapchat and on Instagram I do actually have a Guns and Gains page on Instagram that I will link in the description below if you guys do uh, like all the pew pews go follow it and give me some uh, hype on there but uh, I've got a, a couple in the works um, I will actually show you guys it's clear this G17 long from Zafari Precision, and I am absolutely loving this thing. Let's see if I can get a close up. I'll, I'll run some uh, some footage in between, but uh, this is definitely become one of my favorites uh, at the range. It's just a beast, and one of the uh, you know had to have my collection just because it's uh, the frame is just I mean it's ridiculous. It's kind of like bodybuilding. It's it's absurdly big. So you know I had to have it, but that was my my latest, and I'm. Uh, I'm actually looking at uh, getting a 1911 next. So if you guys are out there and you guys have 1911, maybe more, know more about 1911s than me, hit me up, tell me which one I should get. And I, I wanna get into that uh, game and get into some history. All right, the next question is from August 10987. He said, best thing to do as a 15 or 16 year old to gain muscle. Um, eat big, don't really try to count calories and all that. Maybe you can count your protein, make sure you're getting adequate protein but just eat a lot and sleep a lot, train really, really hard and stick to the basics. Don't try to make it rocket science. Just be patient and just be consistent. That's the biggest thing, man. The next question is from Chase1012. I made it on your last Q and A. So if this one doesn't make it, you're gonna make it. How often do you allow yourself to let loose and enjoy some drinks? Do you feel like you miss out on social outings being a professional bodybuilder? Um, Probably he saw that I was partying the other day and I had a few drinks on my uh, on my story, but I let loose every now and then, usually for family events, holidays, things like that. Um, nothing crazy, I'm not really much of a partier and I don't really have a ton of friends to go out and party with. Most of my friends get that I don't really party, um, you know, and, and my kind of party is going to the range or, you know, going fishing or, uh, you know, doing dude stuff. Uh, but that all uh, being beside the fact um, I would say that uh, I, I definitely have missed out on a lot, um, but at the same time, that's all personal decisions, you know, and, and the people around you should uh, understand that. And you can also put yourself in situations that are, um, you know, that's going on and you don't have to partake. You know, I used to uh, remember growing up and I was like dieting for shows and had like water in my drink. I was one of those guys. So 
you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, the next question is from Nick Rankavon. And this goes back to the other question a few minutes ago about the other PPU. But Glocker 1911, and I gotta say Glock because I'm a Glock guy, don't even have a 1911. But I think 1911s are sweet. And I really, really want one. So I always have wanted like a Colt. Um, but I also, you know, obviously see that there's a lot of other cool ones and there's some 2011s and all that kind of stuff. So I just kind of want it all, kind of want it all, but, uh, but I'm a Glock, Glock guy for sure. Deepan Shagdugala, I don't want to, um, butcher that, which I just did, but how can we reduce side fat? Um, side fat, I'm guessing you mean like love handles and stuff. Diet is going to be key overall. Um, as far as spot, um, body fat, uh, body fat loss. Um, I really like the wraps for, you know, heating up your sides, heating up your core, heating up your back. Um, some of the spots that hold water because um, you can, sh you know, shed some extra uh, water weight when you are doing your cardio or whatnot. So that's something to consider, you know, one of those screams, one of those belts kind of things. Um, another thing is obviously you can train abs and I will actually, you know, be on like a decline and I'm doing like side crunches, that kind of thing, um, which I think helps maybe a little bit. Um, but you know train your abs and just make sure you're on top of it for your diet and try one of those um screams Let's see if that helps next question is from jay will 18,000. he said who helped you with your first cycle did you have someone in your family who competed or dabbled in that um i gotta shout out my my boy john izzy jonathan irizari i will uh, link him down in the description below um he was my first coach and my my big bro uh, he was awesome and he definitely taught me a lot as far as just bodybuilding and just in life in general. And I'm really, really thankful for him and everything that, um, you know, we accomplished together. We had, you know, multiple team nationals. We had all three team nationals and collegiate titles. So four national titles, um, you know, with me and John and, and uh, he was really helpful, you know, and I, uh, you know, I'm really thankful for him and, and the friendship that, uh, that we, we still have, um, you know, I'm, incredibly thankful to to have the the people that i did you know around me growing up because i don't think i would be you know sitting right here talking to you guys uh without them so you know john if you're watching this love you brother uh you know i always call you big bro and uh you know i really i really feel like you are my big bro <laughs> so much love brother um, next question is from sir hanali he said any side effect for creatine it's good for health and how to use this, I know it's an embarrassing question. Um, no, it's not an embarrassing question. Like I said earlier in the video, I think creatine has its place. Um, 10 grams before, 10 grams after kind of thing, or you could dabble maybe with five grams and uh, go up from there. But um, I still think it does, you know, if you wanna be as safe as possible, I think it should be cycled, um, you know, maybe six to eight weeks, something like that, um, maybe even longer, um, just depending on how heavy you're, you're loading it and how precautious you wanna be. Um, but the more that you cycle things, like even with the glycolog, I'll go through like a whole bottle and then I'll take, you know, a couple weeks off. And then once I put it back in, I know, just notice stuff works so much better. So um, keep that in mind. And uh, no, no, one question, no question is embarrassing. It's better to ask than to not ask is what I always tell my clients. Bren B789, what's been hardest during the lockdowns? Uh, staying on track with eating or staying on track with training? At first it was staying on track with eating because there's no food at the stores it seemed like around here. There's chicken was like, I mean, could not find it now. It's everything's good like that. Um, but you know, luckily for me, the gym was an issue for a little bit, but um, you know, I figured that out uh, pretty early on, you know, the, the you know, very lucky with that. And um, you know, as far as everything, it's all been kind of hard, you know, even with the gym, it was like closing early, like two every day. so. You know, I have to train earlier than I really liked and things like that. But um, I've been much for more fortunate than most. And I always try to keep a positive mindset and uh, looking out and seeing how bad some other people have it. You know, it's kind of it's uh, hard to sit here and, and say that I have it bad, knowing that at least I'm working out. And some people have had their gyms closed for, you know, months and months and months. So and I don't even have to wear a face mask when I go out of my house. You know, my county hasn't, you know, uh, required any of that. So uh, we've been lucky around here. T.W. Everett. What do you do for your cool down on cardio? Like I see uh, in the morning snaps and following your workout. To be honest, I walk outside for a minute, maybe with my dog or, you know, go walk around the house. Um, I don't really do much of a cool down. I just do 20, like like I said, I'm doing 20 minutes right now. But when I do 30, 40, um, when I get, start getting up there in time, I definitely 
tried to uh, cool myself down for like a good 60 to uh, 60 seconds to two minutes uh, afterwards just on a slower pace like three or four um, just if I'm like my heart's just racing um, but usually I, I don't technically cool down right now I just you know get it in and usually I'm rushing trying to do something take my son to daycare or do whatever so um, that's kind of my morning the next question is from Christian 0305 uh, will you still be training at MI40? So obviously you guys have seen that I've been training at um, and here at City Fitness in Bradenton um, for the last few months. And to be honest, I'm super thankful for them because most every gym around here closed and they were uh, very kind enough to allow, uh, you know, most of the members and things like that to train and have a place to train. So, uh, you know, shout out to Ryan. Thank you, brother. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, no, no disrespect to MI40. I just... Uh, just haven't really gotten back up there, you know, uh, with the, the lockdown and everything that happened, um, you know, I just kind of got in a routine going here. And, and to be honest, it's a really long drive. And I had my second son here uh, not very long ago. So, you know, time is a little bit more crunched, um, but I am hoping uh, and uh, very uh, hoping that I get up there uh, soon and catch up with all my dudes up there and uh, get some training in. But that's kind of why I've been going to city because obviously the gym uh, MI40 is in a different county and they were much more strict. Um, so the gym actually closed for a few months, but now, you know, obviously being open, I'm just, you know, in a routine now trying to help with little, both little, little dudes, uh, as much as I can and, and doing a, you know, hour plus drive, uh, each way. So, you know, a total of two plus hours on the, on the road, plus, you know, the gym, you know, I was looking at maybe four or five hour round trip, uh, depending on the workout and stuff. So, yeah, long day, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to getting up there, you know, on some Saturdays and some Sundays uh, in the near future, for sure. Okay, the next question is from MT52011. He said, how do you manage still going to the gym with all the going on? I'm still paranoid about it, honestly. Uh, I was paranoid about it for a little bit, especially at the very beginning, especially when I had the newborn, um, but I would like come home and I'd rinse off right away and all that stuff, make sure I, I clean my steering wheel and cleaned my phone and did everything that I could to, that, to think of to stay safe. But, um, you know, they keep the gym so cl uh, so clean and it is a pretty small gym. You know, there's not going to be more than maybe 10 people in there at a time or less. Um, so, you know, I try to, you know, keep my distance and, and just do what I got to do. I mean, I still got to pay the bills and, and uh, you know, work on, on uh, you know, my body. So get in there when I can and, and just be as careful as I can. The next question is from Ryan Jarev, uh, 10. What's your take on cal cal caloric surplus when bulking? How many calories do you recommend? And how, many pro how much protein intake is ideal? Um, to make this short and sweet, honestly, it totally depends on the person, totally depends on their metabolism, all kinds of things. But a good personal note or something to think about is maybe one to 1.5 grams of protein and uh, thinking like, almost double what you would maybe prep on, uh, getting up to maybe that kind of calories. Um, you know, if you prep on 3000 calories, maybe getting up to the, about the 6,000 calorie range, being comfortable there and, uh, and working your way back down. Um, that way you have a very large caloric uh, surplus uh, that once you do start pulling calories out, if your metabolism has caught up to that, you'll be able to ideally lose a lot more weight. Um, so that's kind of, you know, hopefully uh, a good approach to that question. The next question is from Cody. He said, what's your favorite muscle group to train, uh, to work out? Go. Uh, I'm going to have to say either shoulders or legs. I would, and honestly, probably legs. I just am sitting here thinking about it. Uh, probably leg, leg day, just the feeling at the end and, um, you know, just being so accomplished, uh, being like, damn, leg day's over. I don't have to do that for another, you know, four days or whatever. Um, but, you know, I love squatting and stuff like that. So definitely leg day. But, uh, yeah, leg day is probably uh, my all-time favorite. It's a love-hate, though, as everyone knows. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, q and I know it was a long one. If you guys are still there, uh, I really do appreciate you guys tuning in. And uh, make sure you guys hit the uh, thumbs up button and uh, go down there, subscribe if you haven't already. I really do appreciate all you guys watching and uh like i said earlier huge thank you from me to y'all for uh making uh, my dream possible so keep killing it guys and until next video god bless mm -hmm.